All right, so let's, uh, let's create a course manager. And now we're going to be using Angular instead of uh, React. Uh, and it'll be the uh, read-only version uh, of what we've been building. Right? In React, we've been building the faculty's point of view where a faculty can uh, uh, author uh, courses. And they can add content, such as modules, lessons, widgets, exams, homework. Uh, from the Angular's point of view, we're going to be building the students facing uh, application. Right? And uh, we're going to call it uh, whiteboard. Okay? Wink, wink. Uh, and uh, so, uh, so this will be the, uh, the uh, student's point of view uh, application. Uh, so let's, uh, let's, um, let's see where we are. We are in uh, GAT. Get uh, check um, branch. Uh, we are in master, uh, so we'll create a new um, branch uh, for week five. Okay, uh, and uh, and so let's uh, let's follow along. Uh, first, we'll uh, create a new component, whiteboard. So th let's see where we are. We are in Angular, and we have the source right above the source directory. We're going to create, create a new component, ng uh, generate, generate component, uh, and we'll call it whiteboard. Uh, there we go. So we have whiteboard, and um, we'll, have, we'll make that the, um, the, uh, the starting point. Uh, we'll, we'll put uh, some, uh, some uh, dummy content in there for now. Uh, let's see. Um, where is it? Um, here's whiteboard, and right now we'll just... Uh, We'll just put some placeholder content here. So it'll be H1 uh, whiteboard. Welcome to whiteboard. Uh, and we'll make that the default uh, landing um, element instead of the course navigator that we played around with yesterday. Uh, we'll instead put uh, here a whiteboard. All right, so if we load it, there it is. There's our whiteboard. And perhaps put um, some. Um, some div around it, right, to, to give it some uh, padding around it. So let's see, we can do a div. I believe we have, uh, we did um, bootstrap yesterday, right? So we, we have that already installed there. So we, we'll put here some uh, con container fluid, uh, just so that we have some, oops. There we go. OK. Um, all right, so let's see what else. Uh, well, first of all, we'll, we'll, bu we'll build a grid uh, of all the uh, all the courses. Uh, yesterday we looked at uh, creating a list of courses, so it's pretty much the same thing, right? But uh, right now, instead of navigating from uh, one column to the next column to the next column, right, where everything was being rendered on the same page, right, uh, it becomes more uh, challenging when they're they're rendered uh, in different pages, right? We have to navigate from one page to another page, and somehow you need to pass along some context, right? And which course did you click on? Right? So you you need to have uh, pages talking to one another. Uh, so let's uh, let's first create the uh, the, the um, a placeholder for uh, the grid, right? We'll we'll fetch some of these the same way we fetched them yesterday. Uh, we'll fetch them today. With a little bit difference is that. Uh, Yesterday, we put all our services, all our service calls in one, in one file. The ones that were fetching courses, modules, lessons, all data access was in one file. Right? Typically, what you want to do instead is to have uh, one service client file per entity type. Right? Uh, so for instance, uh, if, you're, if, you're uh, if you're interacting and retrieving uh, courses, then you have a course service that will, have, that will host all data access about courses. Right. right now, we'll have just a, uh, uh, just a, uh, a find all courses uh, uh, class. Let's, uh, let's copy it here. Uh, so it will put all our services under services. Uh, and again, it's a little bit different than what we did yesterday. Right here, we were, we were retrieving courses. We were retrieving modules. Right? That's a bad practice. Instead, it's better to split them up right, into individual uh, classes. So let's create here a. Uh, a course uh, service uh, and client, right? So, so notice the naming convention. It's the same naming convention we, we, we started earlier. And it, it's easier for explaining somebody and looking at the file and they know exactly where they are in the, in the application, right? Um, so let's create a, a class. 
and this will be a coarse uh, service client. Uh, service client meaning that it is a client, it's the client side of a service, uh, of a web service, a web service running on the server, right? So we need, we need to understand that on what side of the architecture we're at, right? And so we like to be able to find uh, all courses and we'll use, um, we'll declare a, lo a uh, local um, uh, URL which we'll be using uh, in several of, the, uh, of these uh, uh, methods. So this course URL will be something like uh, HTTP, HTTP slash, uh, slash, slash uh, localhost 8080, uh, and this is API uh, course. All right, so being a little more, um, method, uh, more rigorous today than, than yesterday, right? Um, all right, so we, what we'll do here is that we're going to return whatever the, uh, the promise comes back from, fetch, from fetching uh, that course URL. And we'll return the, um, uh, the, uh, the response body already parsed as JSON. Right? Okay. Uh, so this, this uh, um, uh, we need to declare it as a uh, data, data provider right? so that uh, it can be used across the entire framework. Uh, so we'll, we'll, let's, go, let's head over to, the, uh, to our configuration file, which is the apps module. And we'll declare uh, our, um, our new service as a provider so that it can be injected into other controllers and components uh, to, to retrieve these. Uh, that's great. So now, now, we have, now we, that we have that, we can uh, create our, our component, uh, our grid component. Let's see, we'll create, um, create a new uh, generate uh, component component. Uh, so this will be a coarse grid component. Uh, it'll, be, uh, it'll use the, uh, the, that service to retrieve it and then render it as a grid. Okay. Uh, so let's do that in the, um, in the grid component over here course grid component. Um, let's, uh, let's put an, an H2 here, right, because it'll, it'll be right under the, uh, the whiteboard, right, so this will be something like course uh, grid. Uh, and, uh, and then we can em embed it inside of the, of the whiteboard. So the whiteboard, right under the whiteboard, uh, we can load the, um, the course grid, right, so it'll render something like this. Uh, oops. Uh, core service client cannot find core service client at modules. Oops. Um, let's go back there. Can't find this. Uh, did, did I not import it? Core grid component? Apparently not. Uh, all right, so let's import it. Core service client. Did I call it the wrong thing? I'm sorry? It's a what? Oh, thank you. That's right. It's not. It's not. Excellent. Thank you. So let's uh, export this. And I think it should find it automatically. Uh, it didn't. No. Oh, there it is. OK. So option A return uh, autom automatically loads it in. OK. Um, all right, let's see, does this, is, is this fail now? Okay, uh, can we load it now? There we go. So we have whiteboard now embedding another, another uh, element, right, the coarse grid uh, element. So in the coarse grid element, we can um, uh, hit now a, uh, uh, that service we created earlier, right, and then render it as a, as a several, several cards. Right? So let's see, so we can, um, in the coarse component, let's go to the coarse, comp coarse grid component, uh, we can inject that that's a service. You can say uh, private private uh, service will be the course service client. There it is, uh, and then on uh, on init right when the when the com component is being loaded, uh, we can um, load all the courses and store them in a local in a local in a local array. Okay. Uh, now, it's, it's also um, good practice to uh, strongly type uh, our data types, right, our, all our data 
um, up to this point, we've been uh, relying on just plain old JavaScript, yes? Uh, but now we have the capability of, um, of, of strongly typing and validating all our data. Uh, so, so it's good practice to create a, um, uh, create a models directory and in there uh, declare all your data types, right? For instance, a course. Uh, it should mirror the same uh, data type that perhaps you're using on the on the server side. Okay, uh, so let's see. We can um, we can create here a file, and this will be um, a course dot model uh, dot uh, client uh, dot ts. Uh, notice that I say, I say client because there's a model. There's a server version of this, right? Uh, so so there's, there's models on both sides. Uh, so the, here we can um, export export. A class, and this is a course, and is uh, has um, uh, has an ID, which is a number, and uh, it has a uh, what else? It has a title, uh, which is a string. Okay, so now that's a good that, that, that's a, a nice feature that uh, TypeScript uh, brings in, right? That it's now strong typing. So if you don't, you can't inadvertently uh, assign things of wrong data of, of wrong type. Uh, so now that we have that, um, our components can declare uh, courses uh, to be of uh, type, uh, an array of courses. And we can import that. Right, so this says that uh, courses is a variable of type course array, uh, and it's initially empty. Right? It has no courses in it. All right? uh, so if I try to insert something to this array that has the wrong data type, right, it'll complain. Right, so if I try to add a, a different field that is not in the original uh, data type, it'll complain, right? which is good. We like to cap, cat, uh, catch those errors early on, as early as possible, right? and fix them. So we don't send garbage to the server. Right? We can validate all this on the client side first. Um, all right, so now that we have a, um, an array of courses to, uh, to populate, we can, um, uh, we can now use the service to actually fetch the data. So we can say this uh, service. Uh, and we can find all the courses. Uh, this will return a, um, a, a promise right, that we can uh, listen for, uh, get a call back when, uh, when it comes back from the server. Uh, and hopefully what will come back is a list of courses, uh, which we can then use to feed or populate our local courses with the courses that comes from the server. All right. Uh, once we have that, we can uh, perhaps uh, render that on the, um, on the, uh, on the, in the component, in the, in the template. Uh, let's uh, at least uh, make sure that it's even getting here. So this will be courses.length, right? So if we render it, notice that it went out to the server, it retrieved it, it says, yes, you have seven courses, right? Um, all right, so let's, let's render this now that we have it uh, locally. And for that, uh, we need to copy one of the bootstraps um, components, and we'll use um, cards, right? We've used cards before, so let's see what uh, we can maybe copy one of these cards. Uh, we want uh, maybe a list of cards, several cards. Uh, okay, so here's an example of using cards, multiple cards. Uh, and notice that it's using a, um, a bootstraps grid layout, right? Um, where it splits up the page into 12 equal uh, portions. Uh, of which we have two equal sides here, six and six, right, which add up to 12. So let's grab that. And, uh, and instead of splitting it up into halves, uh, maybe we can have a four or, or three per row. So let's grab that. Uh, and let's uh, put that here just to see what it looks like. Uh, so if we go back and it renders, it looks like this, like this, right? Um, so we want not just one, we, want, no, we don't want just two side by side. Uh, we'd like to maybe three or four side by side. Okay. Uh, so to do that, uh, what we could do is uh, make these smaller, just three and three. Uh, so that's now taking half of the of the original space, and we have we have plenty of space to fill in over there. Uh, so we know what's gonna, they're going to look like, sort of. Right. Uh, we can use one of these as a template that we can copy and paste for every single object uh, in the array. So let's first uh, remove uh, one of these these. Uh, these hard-coded ones. And then what we can do is notice that this is a row, right? And the columns is of size, size three. We can, we can copy and paste this a whole bunch of times, right? And when it runs out of space, right, it's just going to wrap, right? So we can, we, can, you know, we can do 20 of these, right? But only four will show per, pay, per, per row, 
right? because 3 times 4 is 12. Right? Uh, so yeah, so we could use this as a template. So we can use the, um, the array of courses, uh, and we can generate, we can uh, iterate over it, ng4, and we're going to iterate and create a new course, local course uh, variable for every uh, course so, uh, uh, object in the courses array. All right, so if I go back now, notice that it fills in uh, with all the courses, but it's just copying and pasting the same content over and over. Uh, what I'd like to be able to do is maybe change the, uh, the title, maybe the description. We don't have a description. Uh, we only just have a title. But if you had a, a description, you could put it there. Um, all right, so let's, uh, let's do it with uh, title. Let's uh, re remove the car title here and instead replace it with the local variables uh, title attribute, right? So that you have now the, um, the various courses uh, listed there, right? Uh, notice that uh, we have a little, um, uh, th these are, uh, are flush against each other. It kind of looks jarring, right? So let's, uh, let's override this uh, a bit. And uh, what we could do is, um, we can always explore and inspect it and look at the CSS uh, and uh, do, it, do it right on the browser to see, to see what, what, what is it that we would need to do. Uh, let's see. Okay, notice, notice the, uh, the pad. Perhaps we want some padding or some margin around that. So let's, uh, let's see where, what we would need to change here. So let's see. That's the column. That's the card. That's the body. Uh, perhaps the card. Right, we could do the card. And um, right now, this is the styling that it has, right? The background, the border, uh, the radius, right? Um, if we add maybe a margin down below, this could be margin and bottom. Uh, maybe let's see five pixels. Okay, that's a that's a that's a, a little better, right? It adds five pixels. Uh, maybe maybe let's increment that a little bit more. Maybe 15 pixels. Uh, so so where do we put this styling, right? Where do we put it? Well, ideally, you want to be as narrow. Uh, uh, to use a, as narrow context as possible, right, so that you're not affecting everything else. Right, so uh, otherwise, it'll have like a side effects that'll make it harder for you to uh, uh, to debug. Right? Uh, you want to have as narrow as context as as, as possible as, uh, and still achieve what you what you want. Uh, so yeah, so that's this, this is the styling we want. So let's grab that. And notice that each co each uh, component has its own styling file. Right? If you if you remember in the, uh, notice the component that we created earlier. So this is the course grid component that HTML. Well, it has, along with it, a CSS that go, goes along with that component. See that? Which has, as context, this one component. Right? It does not affect everybody else. Right? So if I, if I override here card, right, if I override here card, uh, it will only be affecting this card in this one component. Right? So it, it's not going to spill over to some other page, which I might not want to have the same styling. If you want uh, to have the same style, then you would have to declare at a higher level, uh, maybe at the whiteboard CSS, right? And that would trickle down to all the components underneath, right? But over here, we'll, we'll keep it as, as, low, as small as possible. So having done that, uh, it refreshes now. Notice that all the cards have, the, have, that, uh, have that margin underneath. And that looks much better. Right, it has a, this, the, the word flushing is another. And, and the TS are going to be looking for these kinds of things, right? These, uh, you know, these minor uh, details, right, that uh, you want to make sure you don't have this kind of jarring. You, you know, use white space uh, wisely, right, to make it look nicer. All right, excellent. So we have the uh, whiteboard uh, that it's listing the, uh, our courses. Uh, ideally, we'd now we'd be able, we'd like to be able to you know, maybe click on one of these, right, and navigate. Uh, to another component that would list maybe the, the modules, the lessons for that particular component, right? So let's take a look at that, how we do that next.